Kere, visitor. You are about to embark on a journey of discovery through the rich and fascinating history of classical Greece. You'll become fully immersed in the painstakingly detailed world built for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which you are free to explore at your own pace, without any danger or time pressure. For a directed experience, take one of the many guided tours curated by prominent historians and archaeologists. Along the way, exchange words with some of Greece's most famous historical persons. The classical Greece you are about to explore is at the peak of its glory. This period is synonymous with grand accomplishments of the physical and the mental. Architectural marvels which still stand today dot its landscape, while towering achievements in philosophy, political systems and art still influence our modern society in profound ways. We hope you become engrossed in the dazzling riches of ancient Greece and welcome you to your visit.
Greetings, Wanderer. It is my pleasure to introduce you to a unique tour. One that won't take you to impressive landmarks or famous battle sites, but through a typical Athenian home. My name is Aspasia. Though I am not originally from Athens, I have climbed to the top of its social ladder using my wits and intellect. I've even earned the love of Pericles. One of the most powerful men in the city. The mind truly is a beautiful thing. If Olibos is Zeus's sanctuary, then my house is my own. It is a place where I can shelter myself from the noise and stress of city life. For an outgoing embassy, 
Inside, they could escape from the constant demands of civic life to enjoy the simple pleasures of family life. Look for me when you are done, and we can discuss the things you've seen. Farewell for now. The house, or oikos, was a residence for Greek families and their slaves. Contrary to modern houses, which look outward, the Greek household was built to look inward on a courtyard. The courtyard was the house's central fixture. It was the building's main source of daylight and also the location of religious altars dedicated to worship. The building itself was made up of familiar accommodations, including bedrooms, storage rooms, a kitchen, and a living room. Women were generally in charge of tending to the home, which in Greece was called oikonomia, a term that inspired the modern word economy. A pasta was a corridor that connected a house's courtyard to its residential section. Archaeological evidence from the city of Olynthos reveals that pastas were added to Greek home design in the 5th century BCE.
Greeks had no qualms about combining their work and their private lives, and many of them worked from home. Artisans like blacksmiths, sculptors and potters often had workshops in their houses. Some even operated small stores to sell their work. Similarly, doctors were known to treat patients in special offices located in their homes. Women also worked in the house and were responsible for making textiles, as well as producing clothes and supervising weaving, which was carried out by slaves. If the household was wealthy enough, they could even produce a surplus of textiles to sell in times of financial difficulty. Greeks had no qualms about combining their work and their private lives. Greeks had no Greeks had no Greeks Greek Greek Greeks had no A pasta was a corridor that connected archaeological evidence from the city of Olynthos. A pasta, a pa, a past reveals that pastas were added to. The inner courtyard was the next functionally. It allowed air to circulate and also provided access to most of the rooms. It also sometimes housed a well or a cistern that collected rainwater. In the center of the courtyard was an altar to Zeus Hercules, who served as the protector of the household. Women would often use the space to sew and cook, while children used it as a play area. Furthermore, if the family had pets or animals, the courtyard was where they were allowed to run free. The inner courtyard was the nexus of the house. Functionally, it allowed air to circulate and also provided access to... ...most of the rooms. It also summed in the center... Women would furthermore... The bathroom was located in the back of the house. Much like today, it was used for cleaning and washing, although the Greeks used chamber pots instead of toilets. Most bathrooms had a luterion that could be filled with water for washing. Mirrors, razors, strigils, and sponges could also be found in the bathroom, along with small vases called arebaloi, which were usually filled with perfume or oil.
back of the house. Much like today, most mirror... Greek homes had kitchens where the family's meals were prepared. The Greeks did not often eat meat, except during special occasions like banquets or after sacrifices. They had mainly a grain-based diet, eating staples such as bread, porridge, or a barley cake called maza. They also occasionally ate poultry, fish, and other seafood, as well as fruits, vegetables, goat milk and cheese, and olive oil. Food was cooked on a tripod, or sometimes in a klebanos, which was a sort of mobile oven. Other cooking implements included braziers, mortars and pestles, a spit to hold food over a fire, platters, and frying pans. The family also used the kitchen to store food in containers called pithoi. Greek homes had kitchens where the... Family's meals were prepared. The Greek they, they also food other fa <laughs> Symposia were major social institutions in Greece. They were drinking parties held exclusively for men. The party took place in the men's section of the house, the Andron, where residents and guests reclined on special couches called klinai. Food was served on low tables set in front of the couches, while wine was placed in a crater in the center of the room. During a symposium, men drank, sang, had philosophical discussions, and played games like kotobos. Musicians, dancers, and even courtesans were often welcomed to attend as well. However, wives and daughters were always excluded. The Pyrgos, or upper stories, was the women's quarter of the house, where they could pursue their activities and observe the city without being seen themselves. The rooftops were also used in a special rite called the Adonia, a private celebration held in honor of Adonis, which was reserved for women. At the beginning of spring, women filled terracotta pots with soil and lettuce seeds, then climbed a ladder to place the pots on the rooftop. These pots served as the women's very own Gardens of Adonis. I hope you now have a better understanding of the routines and home life of the Greek people. What would you like to do next?
Then let's start with a simple question. Which group of people celebrated the Adonia? Correct. The Adonia was celebrated by women of all stations. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following was known as the protector of the household? No, this particular Zeus was known as Zeus of the Oath. Try again. Yes, Zeus Herkios protected the household, and an altar to the god usually stood in the center of the house's courtyard. On to the final question. Which of the following was not located in the bathroom? Which of the following was not located in the bathroom? Strigils were often found in Greek bathrooms, where they were most likely used to remove sweat before bathing. Try again! Correct! The Klivanos was a mobile oven usually found in the kitchen. It seems you really know your way around Greek homes. Well done, Wanderer. Hmm, let me see what I can find.
Greetings, wanderer, and welcome to the port of Pireves. Pireves is one of the busiest, most important ports in the Greek world. Money flows through here like a river, a river that runs all the way to Athens. Acting as a port for Athens, Pireves welcomed merchants, goods, and travelers from all over the world. It was a central part of Athens' economy, but it was also fortified enough to protect the city's considerable fleet. When you finish exploring the port, find me, and we will talk further. Piraeus, a peninsula southwest of Athens, became the city's main port after the politician Themistocles encouraged the development of its natural harbors. These developments led to the gradual abandonment of the older harbor of Phaleron. Piraeus's fortifications were further developed by Cimon and Pericles, along with the long walls, which ensured goods could still be moved during sieges. Piraeus was divided into three main sectors, the military port, the emporion, and the residential area. By the 5th century BCE, it had become not only Athens' naval headquarters, but also the mercantile center of the Mediterranean. Piraeus's development during the 5th century BCE attracted a large population. Many craftsmen, merchants, bankers, sailors, and ship owners moved to the port in great numbers. The population was a mix of Greek citizens, foreign visitors, and immigrants known as metics. The variety of the port's inhabitants gave Piraeus a cosmopolitan atmosphere. Most of the residents were involved in trade, but others worked on shipbuilding or in larger scale industries like shield factories. Piraeus's commercial focus offered many opportunities for those seeking to increase their wealth and status. One such rags to riches tale is that of Passion, a slave who eventually became a citizen and earned a fortune thanks to his bank and his shield factory.
Piraeus was a demi, or district, of Attica. Because of its size, function, and varied population, it had a much more complicated administrative structure than other deems. Above all, Piraeus was closely monitored and controlled by the Athenian assembly due to its importance to the city. Within the national trade, which took place in the Emporion, and retail trade, which was managed by Kapoloi in Piraeus's Agora. The Emporion was a commercial port dedicated to trading goods from overseas. All international transactions were required to be made within its limits and needed to be exclusively wholesale. Elected magistrates managed all business and laws in the port. Meanwhile, port authorities known as Epimelites oversaw trade and took care of the regulation of prices. This was an especially crucial duty as the amount of supplies and goods could fluctuate wildly based on factors like bad harvests or lost cargo. Common products sold in the Emporion included vegetables, fruits, fish, leather, timber, marble, metal, weapons, and ceramics. According to Hermippos, Athens was also wealthy enough to afford the finest goods from all over the world, including figs from Rhodes, almonds from Thassos, oil from Samos, and wine from Chios. Taxes were collected on all merchandise that came into the Emporion, which provided Athens with a major source of income. 